Hello, fellow hypnosis colleagues. I'm Mark Savard. I trust your careers are going well and you're kicking ass and taking names at festivals, colleges, and theaters worldwide. Keep up the great work. Now, in being a leading instructor in the field of hypnosis, it is my duty to continue to educate and inspire hypnosis students from around the world. Now, the intent of this video is to motivate and inspire my fellow hypnotists to be creative with routines in their own shows. Now, as many of you are aware, I've had some serious issues with copyright infringement and intellectual property theft over the past few decades. They say, well, whoever they are, that imitation is the greatest form of flattery. But I've got some comments to share on that. See, copyright infringement and straight out stealing other people's material is rampant right now. It's not only happening to me, but to almost all leading hypnotists performing today, and it's not okay. As a matter of fact, it's not acceptable in any other field, but for some reason, hack hypnotists seem to think it's okay. Being original is hard, very hard, but it is a necessity to at least try. The complaint I often hear is that every routine has been done. Well, that's not true at all. Let's compare a hypnosis show to a magic show for a brief moment. There are only seven principles of magic. Palm, ditch, steel, load, simulation, misdirection, and switch. Every magic trick has one or a combination of those elements. What makes each magic trick unique from each other is the pattern and theme around it. Maybe you steal a card off the deck and palm it in the same way as the guy before you, but your story and jokes about a bank robber sneaking into the building or the deck of cards and stealing the money is completely different than the magician who's presenting the same technique as a prediction, mentalism, and mind reading trick. Same fundamentals, completely different, and personal presentation. See, the difference between the magic world and the world of hypnosis is that you can pay for a magic trick. The creator has the choice of putting his trick up on for sale on the market, sells it, gets the money, and you get permission to perform the trick as is. This also happens in other fields as well. For example, maybe you want to sell hamburgers. Hamburgers aren't copyrighted, but Big Macs are. They are made and presented in a certain and identifiable way. If you want to sell Big Macs, you likely have to pay McDonald's a franchising fee for the rights to do so. You can't just put up a sign that says Big Macs for sale and pass off their copyrighted material as your own. McDonald's will slap you with a lawsuit faster than you could supersize your fries. This is the same in the music industry. Bon Jovi doesn't hold the copyright on songs written about love, not even about songs that give love a bad name, but they have structured lyrics and musical notes together to create a song. So yes, you can sing the song or your version of it to your friends, but you can't record an exact copy and then perform it as your own material and tell everyone you wrote it. That's absolutely preposterous. Even crazier would be to charge people money to hear the song when it even, isn't even your intellectual property to begin with. Stand-up comedy, same kind of thing. Maybe you attend an open mic night, tell some jokes about your redneck family, and that's fine. But if you did an entire set that was a ripoff of Jeff Foxworthy's You Might Be a Redneck routine, you'd be kicked off the stage and called a hack because it's so widely recognized as his material and not yours. But in the world of hypnosis, we aren't as famous as Bon Jovi, Jess Foxworthy, or McDonald's, but it doesn't make it less wrong. People have just asked me if they can copy my show similar to buying a franchise like McDonald's. Well, I don't want you to do that. I don't want your money. I don't need your money. Stealing is 100% not okay. If you want to record a Bon Jovi song and sell it on your album, you must pay the royalty fees. You cannot just record it and pass it off as your own brilliant writing. That's stealing and morally not okay. You want my Tesla car? You can't just come to my house and take it from the driveway. That's also stealing. But if I agree to it, I can sell it to you for an agreed price. And that would be my choice. My material, my branding, and my jokes have two decades of development, as well as my life and soul poured into them. You cannot just take it, nor should you steal anyone else's material that they created. Well, what constitutes original and what is stealing? Well, like the example I gave moments ago, Bon Jovi doesn't have the monopoly on love songs, nor does McDonald's on hamburgers or Foxworthy on redneck jokes. But they do have ownership over the pre presentation and the dressing around the ideas that they've originated. I received dozens and dozens of videos of people stealing my material, and I feel it is time to use this as an opportunity to inspire hypnotists, to step out of their comfort zone of copying and attempt to create their own material. I've kind of assembled a handful of examples of intellectual theft that I've endured in the past. So let's check out the video now.
Six inches there, man. Felt like that. Uh, someone's been lying, lying to you for a long time, sweetheart. I'm going to have you do is put your hands together. Begin rubbing your hands. Mr. Miyagi's, remember that? Mr. Miyagi's, remember that? You know what he does when he's horny? You know what Mr. Miyagi does when he's horny? He whacks off. Yeah, he whacks off. He whacks off. Person I'm touching right now, your name is no longer what it is. Your name is now E-I-E-I-O for the remainder of the performance. Every time you do, in fact, think of your name from this point forward, your name always was and always should be E-I-E-I-O. Sorry, is E-I uh, your first name, E-I, your middle name, O, your last name, or is it just D-I-E-I-O, one name, like Madonna or Prince, just one name? It's just one name. One name, all right, everyone just know. Hmm? I'm cool like that. Okay, you're cool like that. Is that your first name? Yes. That is your first name. Okay, what's your last name? E-I-E-I-O. That's your last name as well? It's my name. Oh, okay. Uh, what's your middle name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is your middle name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of weird, right? How do you spell yours? Jesus. E I E I O. Oh, okay. Just, just phonetically. I just, hmm? As it sounds. Right, phonetically. Yeah. Okay. yeah. How do you spell that, bro? E I E I O. Sadly, I can show you another 50 or 60 of these. But let me point out something about the last guy you saw. He's a repeat offender and was just blasting on his social media about someone copying his artwork. And then two weeks later, he did one of my routines on live TV. You can't be a victim and a perpetrator at the same time. It is 100% wrong and not morally okay. Now, I do want to clarify that what I have an issue with is not the name change routine in this last uh, segment of the video you saw. I'm not the creator of the concept of making someone think that their name is changed while hypnotized. I'm the creator of his name being E-I-E-I-O. I've done it for almost two decades. As well as all of the jokes that spin off of it including how he is addressed throughout the show, the pattern involved, the structure of the callbacks, the jokes. Now, this hypnotist could have used any name. I'd have no problem with it. This is my point. Make changes, and then it becomes your own. Make him think that his name is Bingo, or Bobo, or Chuck, or Dipshit, or Dickhead, and then make all of your jokes based on that. No issues. I do a voodoo doll routine, so do a million other hypnotists. Use the theme but make it your own, your own presentation, your own style, your own jokes. I didn't create the world of the phenomenon of river dancing, but I make fun of pop culture and river dance is a staple routine in my show. You can do a river dance routine if you want to, just don't set it up the way that I do. Pretty simple, have fun with it, be creative. Don't paint yourself into a corner by doing other people's material. Now many people who I encourage to write their own material feel discouraged because people just steal their new stuff anyways. It becomes a cyclical problem that perpetuates the cancer in this industry. It's like having five paintings that everyone just repaints. The Mona Lisa and a bunch of other elitist shit. This video isn't to punish anyone. But my intent is to inspire you to do the right thing and help bring the level of our art form to a higher standard. Be inspired, take chances, and come up with never before seen ideas. Even if you think a routine is standard, that everyone does, change it. Deliver it your own way. Be creative and insert your personality. And more importantly, have fun.